Hey everybody, it's Paul Sizer here. I'm broadcasting from the inner sanctum of Sizer Design and Illustration, Cafe Digital Studios, or whatever made-up place I call for my home studio. Um, so I wanted to start doing a series of small warm-up exercises and um, drawing technique things that uh, help me to kind of get my brain activated uh, that I think might be helpful for other people. Um, and a lot of them are going to center around uh, a technique that um, I came upon last year um, that's existed for a really long time called automatic drawing. Um, and automatic drawing starts out as kind of a specific thing, but um, I kind of have changed it into, for myself, kind of an umbrella term of any kind of um, abstract, non-specific drawing techniques that uh, allow your brain to kind of work on a... Um, less goal-oriented way, but more of a way of just kind of letting your subconscious brain um, kind of activate and um, letting your lizard brain kind of react in real time to things that you're doing. Um, and what I found this to do is that this is something that helps my brain to kind of um, get moving uh, and to unclog on things, but it also um, kind of unclenches me from having to worry too much about having a specific goal or end product in mind uh, when I'm drawing. Um, so by letting my brain kind of take the driver's seat, um, I'm able to come upon ideas and, and results that are ones that I don't think I would have stumbled upon if I'd been doing something a little more um, directed or uh, specific. So um, you've seen some of the stuff that I've posted on Facebook if you're uh, one of my Facebook friends and um, as you've seen, there's kind of a wide range of stuff. Um, I'm going to be working in Photoshop today, but um, with automatic drawings, I try and have a couple of constraints. So I'll explain a little bit more, and then I won't have to um, in sub subsequent videos. Um, usually, I try and uh, work relatively quickly. Um, so these videos are going to be not more than, say, 15, 20 minutes at the most. But most of the time, I'm going to try and keep them around 15 minutes. Um, I try and set up a few constraints, um, but I also try and keep things very, very simple uh, and very improvisational and very quick. So um, again, I'm not going to fall down the rabbit hole of having anything that's too complicated or clever. Um, but this is really something that comes from the exercise, which really originated with somebody just picking up a pencil and letting their brain um, move their hand around a piece of paper. So I'm going to be doing this digitally. Um, so I'll be working in Photoshop. Um, I'll be working in a square format so that it's uh, easily postable to uh, Instagram and other places. So while I don't have an end goal in mind with this drawing, um, it is something that I think kind of having the idea that this is something that um, you'll eventually be sharing with people is helpful to me um, because I think that um, I sort of find that even if I don't have a goal in mind, um, the discipline of kind of having to show the results of what you do or the show, the kind of sketchbook results, um, I love seeing that with other artists. And so um, hopefully by kind of laying that out and laying these um, this process out for people to see um, inspires them to react to that as well. So that's enough, uh, enough yakking here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and activate my uh, drawing demo and let's go ahead and bounce into Photoshop. All right, so like I said, I've got a, um, I've got a square format here and my setup is very, very simple. Um, I have a layer for art and uh, then just a the background here. So we'll go ahead and collapse this. Um, so what I'm doing, and again, um, the, the core idea of um, when I do these drawings is that I want to use tools that don't allow me to too, be too fussy. Um, this is kind of the same basic thoughts that I have with um, sketching with a Sharpie marker. Um, I think when you use things that are too precise or too controlling, um, you get boring kind of constipated results. Um, and I like the idea of having a little bit of kind of a loosey-goosey approach to this stuff, um, keeping things improvisational and really... Um, keeping it as um, fluid as possible so that you're encouraging yourself to react in real time to things that you do uh, relatively immediately, um, even to the point of where you're working so quickly that you don't have time to uh, second guess. Um, the other thing and the other constraint I'm going to use too is that in this drawing that I'm going to do, I never use the eraser. I never undo anything. 
Um, it is literally just a, a cumulative effort. So what I've been doing recently is um, I've been doing exercises where I'm using just the lasso tool. And uh, the reason for this is, again, um, I've used uh, the polygonal lasso tool. I've used other ways of selecting. But uh, the lasso tool to me has enough uh, looseness with it, and especially when I'm working with a, um, a drawing tablet like I am here, uh, that I can make shapes quickly and fast, but also there's a, kind of an uncontrolled nature to it as well. Um, because I've removed a lot of the um, a lot of the constraints. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making selections with my lasso tool, and then in those selections I'm going to be um, doing gradient fills. So the gradient fills that I have um, are here, and um, I've got it set up so that my um, gradient is um, goes from black to empty, so it's transparent. So I'll click OK on that. And um, those are the two constraints I have. So I'm going to be working in black and white because of how I'm going to color this. So let's go ahead and get started. Lasso tool and just starting out with shape drawing. And again with this, I'm playing around with the idea of letting the tool and letting selections be natural. So I'm going to take that selection there. I'm going to go down to my gradient tool. And I'm going to just click and drag my gradient tool to make a gradient occur through that. Now it goes from black to uh, more and more transparent here. So this drawing today is going to be just a combination of forms that I'm just going to kind of improvisationally make here. And once they become a um, form that can be a closed path that becomes a selection, and I can go ahead and just click and draw. And because I have um, this set to go from solid black to transparent, um, I'll start to get these overlaps, uh, Command D to deselect, um, where I'll start to see some interior shapes um, and uh, that are happening by the overlap of these objects. Uh, and again, as I'm drawing, since I'm using a, uh, a digital tablet to draw with, um, I like the, the flow of this. Um, I also like that I can control where my gradients start, so I can have things that um, have less of a dominant uh, fill. Uh, I can have ones that are more um, filled with black or whatever. So like I said, the, the idea of this is, is that you're making marks um, just kind of in real time. So since I don't have a uh, shape really or a uh, form that I want to come up with, um, the forms that I'm making are ones that are just kind of reacting to the form that uh, happened before. And usually I don't talk to myself this much as I'm drawing these forms, but since you're here, let me give you something to listen to. So even when I screw up, even with like that last fill wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. Um, again, my the constraint I put on this is that um, this is in real time. So uh, I don't go back and undo. I'm just making shapes and forms. Um, but one thing that I am doing is I'm, uh, I do want to go back and switch around a little bit. So um, I'm switching down here um, with my color palette. So some of my fills are going to go from black to uh, transparent, um, but I'm also opening up the door for being able to go from white to transparent, just to keep things uh, kind of moving along. So again. And whatever combo of things that I do. Um, no erasing, no going back, no trying to fix. So I learned this technique from um, some videos that I saw online. Um, and this was stuff that was um, inspired by a uh, French comic artist, uh, Jean Garrard, who um, works under the name Mobius, a very famous um, French comic artist. Um, but his uh, students and uh, people who worked with him, uh, apprentice and things like that, 
uh, knew that he was a big proponent of just kind of letting his brain open up and um, kind of drawing these things um, in real time. Uh, not specifically like this kind of stuff. He was doing more linear drawings. Um, but again, um, him being able to see things in a way that um, allowed your brain to kind of take the steering wheel um, yielded results that he couldn't plan for, which he found to be very exciting uh, and very invigorating. Um, and which I find too is that um, so much of what we end up doing um, as artists is that we feel we have to hit the ground running and immediately uh, produce results. Um, and I still have to do that. Um, and there's times where I absolutely sit down and uh, have an idea in my brain and just crank out what I need to crank out. Um, but I think that any time that I, uh, while I can do that, uh, I still think it's important to be able to uh, play around a little bit and um, give yourself the permission to just have scribble time. Uh, so this is to me the kind of an equivalent to when you're talking to somebody on the phone, um, when you're doodling on a piece of paper or an envelope, when you're speaking with somebody on the phone, um, that you can uh, have that opportunity to just let your subconscious um, kind of dictate where things are going to go, uh, what's going to happen, and how it's going to play. Um, so the other thing that comes out of this too is, again, with an automatic drawing, uh, I think there's a value in um, also knowing when to call it um, and when to say that it's uh, to a point. So I think I'm going to just do one more, one more shape here. And again, just sort of the shapes that I'm making are reacting to the form. I'm starting to kind of feel a form, kind of a um, volumetric um, approach to how this shape is going. So that's kind of informing how I want to go. So let's do one more, one more fill there. Okay. And command D to deselect. All right. So as we're looking at this, we now have this form that as we view up on it, you can see all these great counterforms, um, and because we've been working in black and white, we have a really wide tonal range. So as I'm viewing through this, uh, I'm seeing all kinds of really cool um, counterforms, really beautiful um, overlays, and again, things that I didn't necessarily plan for, but were are kind of better because I didn't plan for them. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that looks right now. Um, feels like it kind of has its own attitude. So the coloring that I've been doing recently has been um, playing around with gradient maps. Um, and if people are interested in learning more about gradient maps, I can do a video more specifically about that. But I'm just going to kind of do a quick um, application of one to show you, again, how I'm letting um, kind of the improvisational nature of this drawing produce a result that I wouldn't plan for. Um, and I think it makes it stronger for that. So what we have here is a, um, an image that has a wide range from white to black and gray, gray tones um, and grayscale uh, throughout the entire thing. So this tonal range here, um, at this point right now, looks pleasing to me. It looks like it's a, a, a fairly, um, fairly complete, has lots of, um, lots of different percentage points in it. There's a whole bunch of different areas in it that um, looks like a full tonal range. So the idea behind using a gradient map is that a gradient map is something that you can, um, rather than applying black to white to a range of tones, you can apply colors to a range of tones. So the way that I'm going to do that is in my layer, um, in my layers um, menu here, I'm going to go down to this button, and this button here will allow me to select different kinds of things that I want to have happen on a new layer. And I'm going to go ahead and select gradient map. Um, and most times the gradient map is going to default to um, one of the installed ones that comes in Photoshop. But if I click on this, um, I have a whole library of gradient maps that I've built um, over the last couple of months. And I'm going to go ahead and select, um, well, this has been one of my favorite ones, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So what we're seeing here is that this gradient map, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this, is that um, while we're taking a look at this here, the gradient map is looking at the tones in the picture, and it's seeing it from black to white. 
Um, but instead of be, having representing that with black and white, it's uh, representing it with black um, in these middle tones here. It's representing it with uh, this kind of steel blue color, um, this reddish orange, and then this light yellow. So when we take a look at this, um, this gradient map is reacting to the grayscales that are beneath it here and applying colors rather than um, the black and white that's there. So when we take a look at this, we're seeing that it's applying these different tonal ranges and different mixes based on whatever percentage of color tone is beneath it. Now gradient maps can affect the color of um, anything, um, so it doesn't have to be a black and white image. But for this, like I said, uh, I think that sometimes people get a little bit bound up with trying to choose colors quickly. So I like the idea of kind of working in grayscale because um, that allows me to think about that I'm going to have a complete color range. And then with that complete color range, uh, I can um, know that I've got a tonal range for these colors that's going to be interesting. So again, when we're taking a look at this, what we had seen previously as grayscale images um, the gradient map applying those colors to it is now it's creating these great mixes of colors. And so I can take a look through here and depending on how that looks, um, again, there's stuff here that is unplanned, but yet it's re yielding results that are way better than I would have come up with by trying to plan them out. So um, kind of being open to letting that stuff happen is, I think, essential to the way a designer works or an illustrator works. And... Um, yeah, just, again, it unclenches, and I think that that's really important for people. Now, um, so this gradient map is a live um, thing that's uh, reacting to the grayscale beneath here. So if there's something that I wanted to do, for instance, on this layer here, where if I wanted to change the look of this um, grayscale, like, for instance, if I did Command-I to invert it, um, I'm able to change the color, and again, the gradient map is still reacting to the colors beneath it. Um, or if I wanted to go in here and alter that layer with curves, I'll kind of just move this out of the way here so you can see a little bit of it. Um, I can change the, the attributes of that image. And you can see out of the corner here, sorry, it's kind of covering it up. Um, you can see out of the corner that as I alter that, like as I make this image darker, more of the blues and blacks are coming in. Uh, but however I kind of mess with the grayscale image, it does kind of groovy things. And again, that's actually way cooler than I would have thought. So yeah. So let's say I like that. Yeah. So I altered the look of this using my uh, curves and the gradient map then reacts to it and uh, plays around. Um, in that same way, I could also go and fill my background, say, with black. So let's go ahead and do that just with the paint bucket tool. Eh, that's interesting. I kind of like seeing the, the yellow around it. So let's go ahead and just keep that as a white background. So um, I think that actually that's kind of, I would say, I'm going to call it. That's, uh, that's the end of that exercise of drawing. So... Um, in the same way, like I said, um, just by kind of going in here and taking a look at this, um, this has given me uh, a whole bunch of results that I wouldn't have planned on. Um, but in that, but on the other hand, um, it's also given me um, way better results than if I'd sort of planned stuff out to the nth degree. Um, so I think that this kind of sketching can inform um, or encourage you to draw a little more improvisationally. Um, but also to sort of plan layouts and do other stuff like this. So I think that what you do in these loose drawings can apply to how you're um, setting up things in InDesign, uh, how you're building compositions, how you're laying out um, illustrations, all kinds of stuff. Um, and I think there's a lot of value in that. So um, I think I'll go ahead and just flatten this pup. And there's a square format exercise that is ready to go. Um, so yeah. Um, if you have any questions, um, please go ahead and add stuff, uh, add those questions into the uh, comments, and I'm more than happy to um, to um, answer your questions as best I can. Uh, 
but yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's one way of doing automatic drawing. Um, that's one way that I found to uh, create forms and images that are, um, get my brain going, get me thinking about other things, um, introduce color palettes and color, uh, ways that color acts, uh, in a way that to me is, uh, very fulfilling, but also, um, leaves me open to the, the chance that exists in drawing too, which keeps things exciting. So, um, that's all for today. Thank you very much for uh, watching. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, or if you want to see me attack other specific things, uh, or show other ways that I do things, um, give me stuff in the comments. I'm uh, more than happy to do this. These are really helpful for me, and hopefully they're helpful for you. So thanks very much. Good to see you. Take care of yourself. Be well, be alert, and be kind, and I will talk to you more soon. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.